Okay, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Happy Friday. Hope everyone's doing well. I am Ryan J. McCrary, the CEO of McCrary Financial Solutions and president of the McCrary Financial School. Coming to you today with another Lunch and Learn. We have a great, great, amazing guest, someone with a lot of experience, someone who is highly educated, and someone who truly wants to share very important information to the people. Um, so today we are joined with guest Dr. Rosalind Wyatt. Uh, she is uh, head of Marketing Elements. She's a founder and marketing maven. She has a PhD in marketing from the University of Houston, has been a long advocate of small business and the entrepreneurial community. With more than 15 years of strategic marketing experience, Dr. Wyatt's focus is small to mid-sized businesses, nonprofit organizations, and sustainable business development. Uh, her approach to marketing strategy is influenced by her undergraduate education in engineering. Her, her philosophy is that marketing is a science, not merely an art. I want you to keep that in mind because that's very important. She believes that uh, uh, strategy decisions uh, should be based on solid data analysis and not simply gut reactions. The key, she says, is to be informed by data. Uh, it can be informed by the data, but not completely driven by it. So data is important, but that's not 100% uh, of what you need to worry about when it comes to marketing. So data and analytics should be used to guide and grow a business. She teaches at the Cameron School of Business at the University of St. Thomas in Houston, Texas. Her courses include marketing management and strategy, e-business strategy, sales and entrepreneurship, everything that I talk about, everything that I love. In addition to curating marketing elements, uh, Rosalind is the founder of Sustainable Houston, an organization that is devoted to strengthening the Houston business community, through encouraging people to support local businesses. She is also, among many other things, Chief Marketing Strategist at Intelliant, I hope that pronounced it correct, LLC. Actually, it's a startup. <laughs> it's a startup company, a Houston-based mobile health company that develops apps that older adults to better manage their health so they can uh, have their age in place, which is phenomenal. Uh, she has consulted with a number of other businesses in developing their marketing strategy she believes in empowering marketers by educating them so they can make good decisions in the short term and long term. So without further ado, how are you doing today, Dr. Wyatt? Oh, I'm great. I'm, I'm great. I'm happy to be here, Ryan. Happy to be, um, you know, involved in chatting with you. Um, I think you are doing a phenomenal job. Um, I hope uh, other young people and even older people, right? Uh, can uh, learn from you and follow in your footsteps in starting their businesses. Um, you know, I'm a strong advocate of entrepreneurship uh, just because of the times that we live in. And um, I hope that other people see that as a path for them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I mean, the first thing I just want to ask you is like, uh, why is, you know, marketing and sales and everything so important? Of course, I know why it's important. You know why it's important. But a lot of people I talk to, business owners, entrepreneur, uh, you know, people, they still don't realize the importance of having a marketing strategy and how that basically is the lifeblood of business. Right. Well, you know, and I don't know these days, you know, I'm a part of a tech startup, um, so when people are getting involved now in startups, especially tech startups, mm -hmm. you know, people will say, oh, you know, having these big business plans is, you know, is not the kind of the way people do things anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Having a solid business model. But even when you were doing the huge business plans, the bulk of the business plan was always the marketing strategy, right? Because the marketing strategy is how you're going to make money. That's that, you know, all the other stuff, like you say, well, you know, this is the way I'm going to finance it. I mean, that's, you know, how many ways can you finance a business? Yeah. Get a bank loan, <laughs> you know, bootstrap it yourself, uh, you know, have have a generous, <laughs> a generous benefactor, uh, GoFundMe. Right. So the bulk of the business uh, plan was always the marketing strategy. Right. Because mm -hmm. that's how you're going to make your money. That's how you're going to. Um, engage people to even know what it is that you do. 
Um, so I, you know, I always say that I like to start with a definition because I'm one of those people that I like frameworks, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when you talk about marketing, um, the whole idea is from a definitional standpoint, activities and processes, right? That are involved in either creating, communicating, delivering, or exchanging something for value, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, you know, if, if you start with that definition, look, it's all about creating some type of value for somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Creating that value, communicating that value, uh, delivering it in the right way, the right place, right time, um, and, you know, having a fair exchange. So if you don't focus on that from the very, very beginning, mm -hmm. you know, you tend to probably get off on the wrong track. Cause I think people maybe start thinking about, well, I have this product that I want to sell, or there's this thing that I do really, really well. And I want to put it out there. Right. But if you notice from my definition, I said value, it's about, exactly. it's that, it's that key thing. And here's the thing about value. You don't get to determine what is of value to someone else. Right. Mm -hmm. They determine that. Yeah. But the whole idea is that you have to start from the idea or from the, you know, the prospect that, hey, I think this is something that might be of value to someone, but I've got to put it out there. I've got to, you know, price it properly. I've got to deliver it properly. And I've got to tell people about that value so they can determine, hey, do I want to exchange money or whatever for this? So that's why it, it's key. You know, if you don't have a solid marketing strategy, you know, how are you going to get customers? You know, mm -hmm. how are you going to even, you know, you might think you have a great product and, you know, it's all those things that I said, all four of those things that are important. And, you know, and, and I'm sure you've seen people that they say, well, you know, I know that marketing is important but they only focus on the communicating part, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, hey, I'm gonna put, um, you know, ads on Facebook or I'm gonna, you know, build this website or whatever. And it, th there's more to it than that, right? So there's all those four things that have to do with marketing. So what you find is that even if people um, know that they have, have to have a role or have a marketing role, it's typically very incomplete, right? Mm -hmm. So they know, but it, they focus so much on the communication, right? Just telling people and uh, about it that they don't think about like the product part of it, or, or you know how how well this service um, is is um, crafted, and you know, and does it provide the value that I think it provides, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all those things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we got some students coming in here. John, how you doing, King? Out of uh, Buffalo, New York. Shout out to Buffalo. You should have got your T-shirt by now. Let me know if you got it. If you got it, take that picture, post it up, we put it on the website, share it. Uh, also, everybody watching on Facebook, Lakeisha, how you doing? Uh, Relisa says there are definitely different factors to facets to marketing, uh, the intention of your marketing, so many ways, absolutely. And one of the key things that I had to realize also, like you said, a lot of it is data. It's not necessarily just feeling good uh, and about how you feel about the product. Because you may say, this is a great product. I love it. I think people would love it. But once you put it out in the marketplace, you have to see actually how the market responds. Right. And at some time, a lot of times not personal. You know, just because you're putting out there and you put this product or service out there and say, well, no one bought it. I'm so mad. It's their fault. No, they just may not have liked that product. They may like you personally, but that just may not have been a product. Uh, you also need that data. So like I said, it's not just about, oh, I feel this product is going to be great. I think I'm going to make a million dollars. Put it out there and see where is that value. Put it out there for free and say, do people even want it for free? Because uh, some people, if they don't even want it, they won't even want it for free. Now, if they do want it for free, you know, okay, how many people? Are you willing to pay for this? Like you said, what's the price point? How much are you willing to pay for this? Uh, you know, and what is the numbers behind it? What is the data behind that? Uh, so the, for the people that are just completely new to all this, don't know anything, 
but they want to be business owners. They want to put products and services out there. I guess what are some, you know, few tips you have that is main, you know, definitely mandatory when you're implement, implementing your marketing strategy? Okay. So I know it sounds boring, right? But really sit down and think about it. I mean, just think, you know, um, a lot of times, uh, you know, I always start asking people, you know, how do you want this company to look, right? How do you want um, this product to be perceived? You know, start with, with, you know, in five years from now, you know, where do you want to be? So when you're thinking about strategy, a lot of times, um, you know, strategy is the big picture stuff, right? Uh, when you talk about, well, I, I, you know, I want to do a, um, um, I want to get on Facebook and Instagram and all those things. Those are tactics, right? So the thing of it is, is to think strategically. And I always um, give this example. Um, so when you're out in your backyard, if you have a backyard, right? I know some people live in parts of the country where <laughs> they don't have a backyard, but you know, okay. Yeah. Come on me. I'm from Houston, right? <laughs> so when you're in your backyard, you, um, you look around and you see, you know, you see certain things, right? Um, and, you know, you might see, uh, sometimes we have squirrels and different things and, and stray cats that might wander over and you see different things. But you know what? If you were to climb the tallest tree that you have in your yard all the way to the top and look down, you'd get a whole different view, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean. Start, you know, just thinking about like, where you want to go um, first, right? Um, if you wanted to take a trip, you know, you said, well, I want to travel. Well, where do you want to go, right? <laughs> so just really the boring stuff, but just starting fundamentally, just thinking it out, thinking, 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 thinking. So before you even take any um, action, you know, think about it. Like, really, what do I, you know, where do I really want to go with this? Do I want to develop this uh, product? So like, say, for example, in our space, um, the tech product that we're working on, you know, uh, at some point you have to decide or, or uh, probably we've already decided the founding. I'm not a founder, but I'm, I came in sort of early on. Um, it's like, well, where do we want to take this product? Do we want to create a company? Do we see ourselves um, maybe selling the product to another um, entity? Do we see ourselves going public one day? You know, it's, so it's all of those things, you know, just kind of thinking about that. And then from there, put, putting pen to paper, or, you know, fingers to computer screen, uh, computer keyboard or whatever. And um, start by saying, okay, so what are some goals and objectives here? You know, goals are those things that you want to do. Objectives are those things just measured out, right? So if you say, well, I want to open my first store by the end of the year. OK, so now you have, you know, a destination, let's say. Mm -hmm. okay? So now it's thinking about, OK, so what are some ways that I can get there? Right. Um, I think you're in Philadelphia, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, you know, if you want to go to New York, there's probably a couple of different ways or maybe more than a couple of different ways to get there. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are going to be more efficient than others, but some of them, even though they are efficient, it may be more suited to you to take a way that other people might not take. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as a, as a business owner or a potential business owner, you have to really, really think about you and your capabilities and what you want to accomplish. You can't be, you know, you can look at other people and you can look at other businesses but you have to decide for yourself, right? You know, Ryan McCrary does things Ryan McCrary's way, right? Mm -hmm. Now, other people can learn from you, but they might say, you know what? Um, I like what he's doing, but I'm gonna approach it a different way. And that's okay, mm -hmm. right? That's okay. So, you know, basically just starting, you know, using your mind, that's what God gave it to you for, to use it, right? Mm -hmm. And to really, really, um, be deliberate about what you want to do. So I would say that's the first thing, the first step. 
uh, you know, learn from other people, look at other examples, but know yourself like, hey, this is what I am capable of. This is what I'm comfortable with. So this is the path that I'm going to take. So, yeah. Great. So I hope you guys are taking notes. Um, you're getting thousands and thousands of dollars worth of information. So please, I will follow you. I would take heed to it. Uh, so John says, uh, he got the t-shirt, fits perfectly great. My son is taking notes on the free financial literacy course, Peace to the Queen, Dr. Rosalind Wyatt as well. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, we also got some comments on Facebook. Yeah, and everybody on Facebook, if you haven't already, please share, please like, please put some hearts up because that is how we have this uh, post get more reach. That is how we reach more people by engagement. That's how we beat the algorithm. Uh, so please drop a comment in, like, share, hearts, whatever the case may be. Uh, so he says, oh, yes, notes are being taken. Trust. Great, great, great. I'm glad you are taking notes. Um, so a couple, you know, things I do want to, of course, go into again. Number one, like the science of marketing, because it is not just like an art. Like there's a science to sales and marketing. Right. There's science to all this as far as, you know, uh, trying to just get leads, trying to convert leads, uh, trying to, you know, uh, once you convert them, actually get them to buy again your marketing strategy, your sales pitch, how you follow up, all that is a science. You know, having someone see your product, uh, you know, seven times, they say on average of seven times before they're ready to purchase. You know, the fact that the first time someone comes to your website, 98% of them probably aren't going to buy. So all that is a science. So you need to know the science behind that. So i like you to just talk about that a little bit more and also, you know, elaborate more on the startup and just everything you do, how people can get a hold of you if they need to, and all the services that you provide. Okay, so um, like I, you mentioned earlier, okay, so I have an en engineering background. So, you know, all that stuff is kind of interesting to me, right? So, <laughs> data and numbers. Um, so I want, you know, here's, here's, here's a disclaimer first. Marketing is part art and part science, right? So I don't ever want anybody to like throw away your gut instincts, mm -hmm. but use data um, and use analytics to back up your gut. Right. Mm -hmm. So you might you, you you could be right. You know, your gut could be right. It could be telling you right. But try to triangulate that right with some hard numbers. Yeah. So the thing about um, uh, so if you have an e-business, right. Uh, it's a lot easier to um, kind of get those those numbers that you can use yeah. to kind of help you make decisions. Now, if you have a brick and mortar business, it's a little bit more challenging, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what I find is that even with a brick and mortar business, like if you have a store, you have a restaurant or whatever, you um, people don't do enough data collection, even with those businesses. So there's some simple things that um, you can do that are, that you know, that's, that's even kind of parallel, even if you have an um, e-commerce business, right? So one of the things you wanna know is how people found out about your business, right? Mm -hmm. how, how do you even find out about this? So in the digital world, you know, you can trace that a lot easier, mm -hmm. right? Because you can know you know, if you have Google Analytics or any kind of other uh, analytics um, tool, you can see, you know, how people got to you, right? So did they come from Facebook or, you know, was it uh, just an organic search or whatever? Mm -hmm. So you can see that. But even on the brick and mortar side, if you have that type of business, just simply asking people, how did you find out about my store? Or how did you find out about my bakery, mm -hmm. right? And keeping track of that. You know, even if you just have a little notebook, you know, how did you find out about me? Oh, well, um, you know, a friend told me. Okay. Um, I saw an ad. I saw the article that they wrote about you in, um, you know, uh, Black Pages magazine or something, you know, just mm -hmm. keeping track of that. Um, those are simple things that you can do, right? Mm -hmm. um, also, seeing how people uh, respond to your uh, promotions, right? Mm -hmm. It's really easy digitally, right? Because, you know, you know, you put out a coupon or some type of offer and you can see all the response. Mm -hmm. But even in a brick and mortar business, you need to keep track of that. 
um, as a, you know, if you have a small business, you know, if there's a coupon or if there's some type of offer, make sure you keep track of that. So you can see how people respond mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, and just making sure that, Hey, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm looking back, I'm not just collecting that data. I'm looking back over it and I'm using it to say, okay, so I'm going to run this same promotion again, you know, because it worked well last time. Right. So you can kind of see what things work by collecting data. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think that it's like some big mysterious thing. It's not. It's simply just, you know, just like getting a spreadsheet and just jotting down, um, you know, how people found out about you. Maybe if you have um, good word of mouth. Uh, hey, that's something you need to exploit more. So I'm going to give incentive you know, to my word of mouth marketing people to, sh you know, to share and pass my message and on to other people, because that's what's really getting me uh, the good bang for my buck. You know, it may not be, you know, this newspaper ad may not have worked very well, or, or this um, Facebook ad may not have worked very well, but oh my goodness, my word of mouth is just through the roof. So how can I incentivize more people um, to do that? Uh, the other thing is when you think about uh, collecting the data and why it's so important is that you have to look at marketing as an investment, right? Mm -hmm. I think in the past, people have looked at it just as an expense, Yeah. but you have to look at it as an investment. So, you know, like even with Facebook, for example, if you say, well, I'm going to um, do a lot of engaging with Facebook or, you know, with Instagram Here's the thing, those accounts don't actually cost you any money. That is if you don't, you know, like boost ads and yeah. posts and stuff like that, but they do cost you time, right? Yep. So you need to figure out, okay, so how much time am I spending on this? And if I were to pay my, if I were, let's just say I'm spending, you know, if I'm spending six hours or whatever to, you know, to come up with these uh, ads and do all this stuff and, um, you know, this, of course, it's my time or whatever. Um, what is my return on that? So what am I getting back in return from that? Mm -hmm. Then how much would it cost me to hire a college student <laughs> or a high school student to do this? If I pay them like, you know, 11 or $12 an hour to do this, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that is a better investment of my time and I can still get a return because, hey, you know, people kind of respond to the Facebook ads and the Instagram posts and whatever. But, so maybe it's worth it for me to have somebody else to do that. Right. And then I can spend my time um, doing something else. But unless you measure all this stuff, you're not going to know. You're not going to have a clear answer. Um, you know, and that goes across the board. I mean, that's, and that's for every uh, marketing effort that you have, whether it's something traditional like, you know, a lot of times um, I always tell people, if you have a local business and you really want to get a lot of, you know, kind of, you, know, you need local traffic, you know, people forget about like radio ads. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know, depend, a lot of people still listen to terrestrial radio or, you know, what you call the regular radio. Mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, it's about two, it's been about maybe two or three years ago. Uh, we had a classic hip hip hop station. Um, love that station. It's not hard <laughs> here anymore because, like, I'm a, like an old hip hop head, right? So <laughs> I like I that remember, too. I remember hearing these commercials like every morning when I was taking my kids to school. I would hear these same commercials, like for there was a law firm, and then it was maybe some dental office or whatever. But that law firm, like. They said the business had just grown, just grown tremendously because pe they were running those those mm -hmm. ads on local radio, right? Mm -hmm. um, but here's the thing, you know, measuring how people found out about you. So if you say, oh, I heard your radio ad, or people might put some, you know, tell us that you heard us on this, you know, radio show or whatever. Well, you know, keeping track of that and then saying, okay, you know what? We got a hundred new clients. Um, and we paid this much for these radio ads. So that's a simple um, return on investment calculation. And if, it's, and if it's to your advantage, if you're getting a good return on something, 
hey, keep doing it. Double down on it. <laughs> yeah, keep doing it. Yeah, like you said, you might want to and, and do it more and expand. But the thing of it is, is unless you actually measure those things, mm -hmm. um, you're not going to know. Mm -hmm. And I think people may get intimidated by the idea of measuring and data and all that. Um, when you hear people talk about big data, you know, that's huge companies. You know, um, you have to have a lot of um, analytical power to, to kind of grind through that data. But like I said, I see that small and, and mid-sized businesses don't keep enough of just their own small data. You know, forget big data, you know, keep track of your, your small data. And I guarantee you, it will help you in your decision making. Right. So you can feel a little bit more secure. So you're just not out there on your gut. But if you, you know, I'd say in many cases, your gut might be right. But mm -hmm. collect the information so that you can verify that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. OK, so it says now we have more radio outlets with the Internet involved also. So that is even more abundant opportunities. Yes, yes, absolutely. Definitely. So, I mean, I love everything you just said, because that's, you know, definitely what I do. You know, anybody that comes in, like you said, with online, it gives you a lot of information that you don't have to maybe ask. Like with my Shopify store, it'll say, hey, your customer visited from Facebook or they visited just from the website or was it an SEO, you know, search engine optimization search, something like that. But anybody that I, any customers that I do interact with directly, I always ask them, where did you come from? You know, did you see me on this platform? Did you see me just on Facebook? Was it on YouTube? Whatever the case may be. And then, like you said about word of mouth, that is why I have an affiliate program. So exactly. now, you know, everybody that's part of my school, they have the ability for free to be an affiliate. So now you can get in commission. You can get 20% commission for spreading the word and, you know, getting other people to enroll in the school, getting other people to purchase the courses. So it brings value to everyone. It brings value to the new student because they're now introduced to financial information that they probably didn't know about. Uh, it's an incentive to the current student that brought someone in because they are actually not just talking about it. They're actually going to get some money for bringing someone in. And of course, it's value to me and my school because it helps build the school, increase revenue uh, and still give value at the same time. So everything you talk about is everything that I do. Um, a lot of things that I didn't even know. So I'm learning as well with you guys. Uh, if you have more questions or comments, please put them in. We'll go to a short Q&A in a moment. Uh, but another thing I thought of, you know, just while you were talking is I do a lot of sales hacks and I look at other companies and just see what they do. So right. all the good companies, what did they probably do when you first get indoor or you first get on the phone or you first get on the website? How'd you hear about us? Well, you know, you know, take our little survey. Was it from a Facebook ad? Was it from word of mouth? Was it from radio? You know, was it from just a Google search? Was it from a friend? Uh, you know what I mean? What brought you in the door? Yeah. And then they try to give you some value and, you know, one type of, uh, so they want to know, you know, what you're interested in. What do you like? What do you not like? And then try to get you to convert. Another thing I think it's important is figuring out your target audience. Because the main thing is, you know, having the right offer in front of the right person at the right time. Because you could have the best marketing strategy and be marketing to the wrong person right. <laughs> or the wrong client or the person that's not really interested in your project, uh, your product or service. Um, so, you know, that's one of the main things as well, is just figuring out your target audience and right. make sure this marketing strategy is in front of the correct person. Um, so I guess what tips would you have for people when trying to figure out your avatar, your ideal customer or the target audience, you know, you're going after? Well, the one thing is open up your mouth and talk to people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Ask them, just mm -hmm. ask it. So a lot of, um, you know, in that, in that whole, you know, thinking period that you're going through, you're going to be doing a lot of asking, just asking people questions. What do you think about this? And, um, you know, if you're going to be a business owner, you cannot be afraid to ask people questions. You cannot be afraid to get, to gather information. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're talking about this whole idea about having a great product, but nobody buys it because you're not in front of the right audience. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to that whole value issue, uh, finding the people who find value in this. And, you know, and, and don't be shocked that a lot of times who you thought would be the ones turn out, <laughs> not, to, turn out not to be the ones, but don't get offended by that. Right. Because mm -hmm. I remember when I was back in um, in school, um, you know, we had these uh, we would have these, <laughs> these Friday seminars. <laughs> researchers would come. Right. And they will present these papers, you know, it's very, you know, it's, it's 
it's kind of wonky, right? So they would present these papers. And, you know, and I remember this one woman came to talk about positioning, right? So how you position your product. So I asked this question of her, you know, you know, kind of academically, I said, well, you know, what if you have positioned this product a certain way, but you find other people who are not, you know, who are not thought of in your positioning strategy, what if they're the ones who are buying the product, right? So what do companies do? Do they say, oh no, I don't want you buying the product. Oh no, 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 no. no. Um, yeah, I said, you know, from a, you know, from an academic standpoint, she says, well, you know, you may want to rethink blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, okay, so from a business person's standpoint, you know, not an academician. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like, okay, all right, I'm, I'm cool with y'all. Yeah, okay, so y'all are the ones. So let me just kind of move over here and direct my attention a little bit over here and really make the most of this, right? Because as I said before, it's the people who decide what's of value to them. It's the people, you don't get to make that determination. But the thing as a smart business person is you don't get upset. Don't take it personally, right? I think a lot of people might take it personal, but don't take it personally because for whatever reason, you know, I've got options. I can spend my money how I want to. Mm -hmm. um, okay, if you don't appreciate me, well, these people over here might. So what I'm saying is just, you know, ask the question. Don't be afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And before we move on, uh, please let us know your website and just how people can get in contact with you. Because I know people are watching. If you watch on the replay, people are definitely going to want to know how they can get in contact with you, you know, how they can talk to you or get some of your services, wherever the case may be. Before we move on, let's just get people that. Okay. Well, uh, my marketing elements website is dub 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 marketing dash elements. So, you know, don't forget the dash. Uh, yeah. Marketing dash elements.com. Um, you can email me at Rosalind. That's spelled R. <laughs> she uh, knows what? what email everybody. Oh, no. Yeah. You know, that's the reason why I contacted you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no Gmail. Yeah, I mean, can you speak on that point for a minute? Because I got a lot of backlash over that. Yes, yes. I, you know, and I know you did. And so I'm going to back you up on that, right? <laughs> uh, don't be mad and don't be angry at Ryan. Um, you know, that's just, that's just real truth. Um, you know, get a domain name or just even if you just get email, right? Mm -hmm. um, it just, it's just more professional to have a, um, your, you know, a, a branded Gmail, I would say. Um, because what I told people was, I mean, I can see if it was a lot of money, but you could go to GoDaddy and get it for yeah. like literally two ninety nine. Yeah. So when it's that cheap, um, you, it's no excuse to get that because it's all about, you know, being professional and, you know, going into those, you know, uh, situations or networking events or trying to get those higher end clients, you're going to need a branded email address. It's just right. plain and simple. If you don't agree with me, then you just haven't reached a certain level in business uh, and networking, honestly. And, and, you know, and here's the thing, it, it goes back to uh, marketing strategy, right? Uh, everything you do uh, is going to reflect on your, your brand, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's going to reflect on your company, your product. So those are really little easy things uh, to do that will, you know, you know, that sends a certain signal to potential customers and, um, you know, people that might want to partner with you. It sends a certain signal to say, look, I have uh, taken the time and the effort to get a branded email. You know, this is my company, mm -hmm. you know, um, at gmail.com is not my company. Uh, that's somebody else's company. Exactly. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, marketing dash elements.com. That's my company. Exactly. Um, so yes, it's, it's very important. And yes, that is the reason why I reached out to you in the first place. Cause I agreed wholeheartedly. Yeah. And cause and a lot of people were like, well, it's just something little as Gmail and that, you know, it don't really matter. I'm just starting, but you have to realize it does matter. It may just be like something simple to you, a very simple change. And I told people, even with the G Suite, you can do everything through your Gmail on the back end, but on the front end, you still have that branded uh, email address. 
But honestly, it does matter. Like I wasn't saying it to be mean. I wasn't just saying to look down on no one. I was just saying everyone, you know, to everyone to help because at the end of the day, you think it's a small, minor change, but it does matter and it does matter a lot. Yeah, it does. So, you know, um, so that I, you know, I high five you on that one. Um, <laughs> <Thank> so, <you. laughs> uh, it, yeah, that's, it's, it's just a good way to go. Uh, start out from the very beginning, um, you know, thinking in terms of, hey, this is a real business. This is, you know, I'm, I'm serious about this. Mm-hmm. So uh, that is like the first step that you want uh, mm-hmm. to take. Um you know what you were asking me or, or mentioning to me, I, and actually I have another venture that I have started. Okay, I'm sorry, before you even finish, uh-huh. give your, finish your email again. Oh, yeah, yeah. You so it. it's Rosalind, R-O-S-A-L-I-N-D at marketing-elements.com. Okay, let me put that in the chat so for you, everybody. Yeah, yeah, so you can email me directly, um, you know, and I'd be uh, happy to answer questions. Um, you know, and give, you know, whatever information that I can mm-hmm. um, in an email. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I, so I wanted to mention my other venture. Oh, sure. Yes. Absolutely. That I have started. Uh, I actually have an e-commerce store. I'm really big into green and sustainable products. Mm-hmm. So I have an e-commerce store called uh, greenelements.market. Mm-hmm. And uh, Green Elements carries a lot of, you know, very, you know, if, if among green products, that is well-known brands. So, you know, we have, you know, all these, you know, whether it's health and beauty, you know, whether it's um, some food items, a lot of the food items um, we kind of sell in bulk for people who want to buy uh, bulk quantities, Um even baby stuff, pet stuff. So all kinds of green products. But I really like, I like it. And I started doing it because it's a vehicle for people, especially, you know, African-American businesses, small businesses. If you make a green product, you know, that doesn't have chemicals and all the nasty stuff, it's a great product or a great opportunity to market uh, those products for people. So that, that's what I was really thinking about when I um, acquired the store, right? So, when, you know, when we started building out the store, um, I was thinking of, you know, yeah, okay, it's great to carry these brands of products. You know, people know these brands, right? Um, if you're in the, into green products, um, people are familiar with these brands. But man, hey, this is a good opportunity to help, um, especially small companies that make green products. Hey, this is a good opportunity to help, you know, me help them market. So if you have a, you know, anybody out there who has a green and sustainable um, product, if you're looking for a place to market it, uh, please contact me. Mm-hmm. We want to help you, you know, <laughs> put your products out there. Um, and like I said, that space is really specific. So, um, you know, I work hard on um, that type of marketing because I think, you know, as a, especially as an African American uh, person, you know our communities need more green and sustainable uh, <laughs> oper- uh, well, let's say options, because you know we probably face um, you know the highest incidence of asthma and allergies and you know and environmental pollution. So anything you know to to work with uh, greening our community or putting more green and, you know, natural things in our bodies. I'm all for that. So anybody making those kind of products, like, you, you know, I see a lot of uh, hair care, you know, natural hair care. Yeah, a lot of them now. Product yeah. producers. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, they use, you know, all natural ingredients and they, you know, they're doing their thing. Hey, we're out here to help you market that more. Mm-hmm. They're making a lot of money too. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so Shante Evans says she makes tons of green products. So she will definitely contact you because she's been struggling uh, yeah, Shante, make sure you definitely reach out and connect with her. The email's there. The Her website is there. I pinned the website uh, in the chat so everyone coming in will see it. If you come in and watch this on the replay, uh, you can definitely type a comment in, a question in. Your question will be answered. I'll come back and answer it. Uh, if you need questions from Dr. Wyatt, I'll 
you know, reach out to her and get your question answered directly. Of course, you can reach out to her. Again, the website is marketing-elements.com. So www.marketing, don't forget the dash, elements.com. Uh, she also has her email on there. We have it there. Uh, and all this, you know, everything we're talking about, for me, it all hones back to financial literacy. That is why, you know, I started my school. That is why I started my business. That is why I ventured out of corporate America uh, and, you know, in the finance industry, working with multi-million dollar clients, uh, because it really just didn't sit right with my soul because I knew on the other side, when I go back home, most of my family members and friends don't have bank accounts. We don't know about investing. We don't know about stocks. We don't know about entrepreneurship, all that type of stuff. Uh, so if you want to sign up, if you're not already, go to the McCrarryFinancialSchool.com the mccrary financial school.com you can also get the financially literate t-shirt we have brand new uh t-shirts in stock uh i'll put that uh in the website for that in the chat as well uh I'll put the uh, website for that um so you can you know get the course the apparel whatever the case may be also go to marketing-elements.com marketing-elements.com if you haven't shared already please share this is how this needs to get a million views instead of something ratchet or something that's really not healthy for our community that'll get a million views but this will probably get 200 views uh but it starts with us sharing us liking our uh, engaging that's how we can beat the algorithm that's how things can go viral with the engagement of people sharing so if you haven't shared already please share so i guess the last couple questions i have for you before i let you get back to your busy busy day uh, it's just, you know, the importance of, of course, supporting each other, supporting black businesses, supporting our community, uh, and just the importance of, because the main thing for the Gmail thing that I thought was just black businesses need to level up. We got to step it up so we can be truly competitive because having a Gmail is not, not going to make you competitive. It's yeah. all about, you know, black people, they want black people to be uncompetitive. Uh, not one to be able to compete with these brands, but it starts with your mindset. It starts with little things like that. Um, so we don't want you, you know, people saying buy black, you know, it's a trend now, buy black, support black businesses, but don't buy black and support black just to support black businesses. Support a good business that happens to be black. So, you know, instead of going to that restaurant or whatever the case may be that you would normally go to, try to find a black business that you can go support but you want to make sure that the establishment is up to par. Um, so I guess just, you know, what are some last tips you have just and all your amazing experience for entrepreneurship, you know, uh, businesses in general, of course, marketing, sales and all that. But just any tips, anything you can share with people that'll be helpful to take their business to the next level. Well, you know, um, you know, just based on looking at history and just oh, the things that Black people have been able to overcome. Mm -hmm. you know what I expect excellence. Exactly. Exactly. I expect excellence because we have shown excellence. I mean, you think about it, right? Um, I was just, I, I happened to be in DC over this past weekend and I got a chance to go to the museum, right? The new museum. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, it's the whole, you know, the basement is, is about, you know, the whole slavery, yeah. Jim Crow, that. And if you go through that, you know, this Emmett Till Memorial and all of that, and you go through that and you are, you're like, man, look today, you've got the Ryan McCrary's, you know, and the Claude Anderson's and the boys. <laughs> Thank White. you for putting me with them. <laughs> and all of these, well, you, you know, you, you're going to get there, you know, you, 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 you're a young pup, but you're going to get there, right? You're going, you going, <laughs> hey, you are on your way. But when you think about, you know, all these things, um, you know, people um, talk about uh, Obama, right? Oh, Obama didn't really help Black people. See, the whole point of this is you got to stop and think. That's not what that was for. True. That was symbolism. Exactly. You know, who you should be looking to are the people, you know, who are helping you build uh, financially, helping you build mm -hmm. in business and those kind of things. That's symbolism. And what you do for that, that's kind of like a thing that says, oh, you know what? Hey, this is possible. I can do that. So this is a, a way of encouragement, right? Mm -hmm. You don't, I mean, I typically don't look to a lot of politicians. I, I think there's a place for that, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, you get the economics together and then you can, you know, have a, a real handle on the, pol the political, right? But uh, I expect excellence. Mm -hmm. So when I go, you know, there's a lot of Black restaurants um, 
let's just say, for example, uh, in many cases, you know, I get excellence, right? Excellent food, kind people. And what, you, what we try to do is, is to, you know, to build those up, to, to really support those and to tell other people, hey, if you want to be excellent, look at what they're doing. You know, you might do a whole different kind of food and that's fine. But, you know, look for what is excellent. Strive for excellence. You know, and even with your kids, um, I think you have a daughter, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, I have kids and my kids are um, college age. And, you know, I'm telling them, hey, be excellent. Right. And remember to think entrepreneurially. Even if you have to go work for somebody for a short while, always think, you know, my product is my labor. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm selling it to you, you know, cause this isn't slavery. You're not getting it for free, but I'm doing it on, on my terms, right? And, you know, as long as these terms are favorable to me, you know, we're good. But the minute they stop being, you know, unfavorable to they, the minute they stop being favorable to me, I'm looking for a new situation. Mm -hmm. So think entrepreneurially. Think of yourself and your skill set as your assets, right? And then you're going to go and sell them, you know, to the person that's willing to ex exchange the proper value for you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, don't just you know, like we were saying, think excellence. Don't just be content with just opening a business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, our people have shown some, ooh, some resilience, some brilliance. And that's what we all should come to expect. That's mm -hmm. what we should come to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go be African-American, you got to be, you're going to be brilliant because that's who we are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So black excellence. We're going to end with that. Black excellence. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, Ralisa says uh, excellence is within the fibers of our being. Absolutely. Skill sets equals assets. Absolutely. So black excellence, black excellence, black excellence. That is what Dr. Y is doing. That is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be up there with the Dr. Andersons and the Dr. Watkinses and everyone else that have done amazing things because black people, we are amazing people most resilient people overcame everything, uh, everything thrown at us, we've overcame it in history. And we're just, you know, gonna keep doing it, keep striving, rebuilding Black Wall Street and truly doing it, not talking about it, but actually doing it. Again, uh, if you want to get in contact with her, if you would like to, you know, get some of her services, if, you know, green products and you need help with that, go to uh, www.marketing-elements.com www.marketing-elements.com. People saying thank you so much for all the time and energy. Four exclamation uh, points. Uh, Shante says, thank you. This was an amazing live. Yes, thank you guys. We can't do it without you guys. Um, so just make sure you share. Make sure you share. If you haven't already, please share. If you think it was great, uh, you know, the next person probably will think it was great, but we need you guys to share, like, hearts. Thank you guys for engaging. Um, how does one get started? um you mean with business or um what do you mean you can uh contact her again the email is rosalyn at marketing-elements.com and then marketing-elements.com <clears throat> marketing-elements.com well, i just want to thank you thank you so much for just sharing some information to the people taking time out of your very very busy schedule to share information so i just want to truly thank you for just coming and just giving that great information Okay, so Ryan, you know, we have to do it again. Definitely. And you know what? And one of the things we didn't get to talk about um, because we got caught up in some other stuff, <laughs> but I, um, you know, I would definitely like to talk to people who are thinking about doing tech startups. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, having gone through that experience, that was uh, very interesting. And I will tell you, that is not an easy road, but it is a good road to take for those who are interested, you know, in doing um, a tech startup, um, building some kind of uh, platform or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll talk about that. Maybe we'll talk about that um, soon. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Definitely do that. Uh, people love you. So of course, we're definitely going to bring you back. Um, how does one get started with my school? Uh, I, I put the com I put the uh, website in there. Let me let me put it in there again for you uh, before we wrap. 
Um, but yeah, definitely, I would definitely love for you to come back and share that information. Um, let me see. <clears throat> yeah, I would definitely love for you to come back and share that information because that is something that's very important because that is where the money is at. Mm -hmm. People are making so, so much money in tech. I mean, just to think about just Facebook in general, Mark Zuckerberg, I think, I forget the last number, I don't know if it's 30 billion, 60 billion, I don't know the exact number, but if you just think about it, Facebook didn't even exist 15 years ago. Right. Like, like literally, I literally remember when Facebook started, that's when I was like a freshman in college, and right. we were like hooked, it was the biggest thing in the world, of course it wasn't as big as now, right. you know, but it was just amazing, and just to think like, he's worth that much money, that company's worth that much money, but 15, 20 years ago, it didn't even exist. Right. Literally didn't even exist. It took over industries that have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, so that is something, especially black folks, we need to get a piece of that. Uh, we definitely need to, uh, you know, we definitely need to be in that industry. So I would love for you to come back and share that information. Definitely. Um, and all the other amazing information that you can uh, give to people. So just thank you. Thank you. We'll definitely stay in touch. I think uh, I might be hiring you as a coach as well. Um, I think you guys just seen uh, something else transpire of me getting a new business coach uh, that I can connect with. So we'll definitely be in touch. I'll definitely bring you back and just share some great information because at the end of the day, we want to give back. We want to give value. And it's not really about money. It's about us just giving information that's helpful to get people to the next level. So thank you so much. We'll definitely have you back. To share you know that about tech startups for people that are interested if you're not interested you may want to think about being interested because that's where the money's at and that's where black people need to get a slice of that pie right and i will say that you know black people are some of the biggest consumers of tech tech products but you know are we producing exactly uh, in in kind so exactly. think about it if you know if and there's many ways to get involved in tech, right? Mm -hmm. you, even if you don't code or if you don't come up with, you know, your own product, there's still ways to get involved and to get in that industry. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we are consuming it the most, you know, usually over every other community. I've seen a study recently about like Black people consume more entertainment than any other group, but, you know, we don't have a, 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 a equity share in hardly any company and that just has to change. Yeah, yeah, it does. And, and, and I hope that people feel confident that their ice is cold enough. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Your ice is cold enough. You know, you don't, you don't need to, uh, you know, worry about, oh, this group is doing that and that group. Really, your ice is cold enough. You're fine, mm -hmm. right? Because you're excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you again. I can't thank you enough. Uh, I'll definitely be in touch, you know, I'll definitely be emailing you uh, and we can, you know, set it up again and like, you know, talk offline as well, because, you know, other things I would love to pick your brain on, you know, to help me as well. Um, so just, you know, be on the lookout for my emails and everything. But thank you again. Thank you so much. Everyone in the chat is saying thank you. Love that phrase. Your ice is cold enough. I like that, too. That was a very good phrase. Your ice is cold enough. So everyone's saying thank you. Uh, Sharita says uh, what I'm also, uh, that was awesome. Best way to spend on best way to spend my day off. So great. Um, you know, great. Well, thank you for tuning in uh, again. If you haven't shared already, please share. If you come in and watch the replay, which a lot of people do come in, drop a comment in a like in a share uh, question, whatever the case may be. Uh, but again, thank you. So we'll definitely be in touch. Just be on the lookout for my emails. Uh, Cause I'll definitely be contacting you very soon. Okay. Well, you know, in the words of hip hop, <laughs> Peace. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.